I hope so, because for the next five weeks, we're going to be hearing about the last part of the big Bible story, and we're going to discover that Jesus is over the top bonkers in love with you and you and you and everyone in this world. He loves us all so much, and we're going to hear some great Bible stories. Speaking of bonkers, Preston, you're looking pretty bonkers today, I must say. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty bonkers today. That reminds me of our family question. Go around and ask, have you ever gone totally bonkers? What happened? After you answer this question, show your family your most bonkers move. <laughs> so pause and answer the bonkers question and then show your most bonkers move. Bonkers. Wow, that was pretty bonkers. You know what though? That actually reminds me of our story today. It's a story about a man who was walking in darkness and acting bonkers. But when he saw the light, everything changed. Are you ready to hear the story? Here's how it's going to work. We have a bonkers bell. When we hit the bonkers bell, there will be a spinner that stops on an acting style. However it says to act, I would love you to act like it during the part of the story at home. Yeah, so our story this week is Saul sees the light. After Jesus rose from the dead and went up to heaven, the disciples told everyone the good news. Then those people told other people who told other people who told other people. Pretty soon, the first church had started. More and more people were becoming Christians and following Jesus every day. But not everyone. In Jerusalem, there was a man named Saul who hated Christians. Saul was a Jewish, which means he's part of God's special family. But he didn't believe that Jesus was God's son, and he wanted to get rid of Christians. That's pretty bonkers. I think we should hit the bonkers bell, don't you think, Carson? Yep. Okay. Three, Three two, two, one, bonkers! bonkers! He looked low and searched for Christians, and wherever he found one, he would grab them, arrest them, and drag them to jail. Saul even wanted to have the Christians put to death. One day, Saul was walking on the road of a town called Damascus when something totally bonkers happened. Oh, I think we need our bonkers bell. Ready? Three, Three two, two, one. one. That's bonkers! We have our scary cat! <laughs> Let me see at home as a scary cat. <gasps> as he was walking. We're talking about Saul. A super bright light from heaven flashed all around him. Saul fell to the ground and he heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why are you opposing me? Saul replied, Who are you, Lord? The voice spoke again, I am Jesus. Now get up and go to the city, where you will be told what to do. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he couldn't see. He was blind, so his friends led him by the hand to Damascus. Wow, those are some nice friends, aren't those? That wasn't the only call that Jesus made that night. Later on, Jesus called to a man in Dam Damascus named Ananias. Jesus told Ananias, go find Saul and talk to him. Let's see how Ananias responded. All right, I think we need our bonkers spell to see how he responded. Oh. Ready? Yeah. Seven, Three, two, one. That's, that's bonkers. bonkers. Wow, 
Wow, you all are bonkers. Preston, how did Ananias respond? Ananias responded in Acts 9, 13 through 14. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But Jesus told Ananias not to worry. Jesus said that he had chosen Saul to tell the whole world about him. Let's see what Ananias did next. This sounds pretty bonkers, doesn't it, Carson? Mm -hmm. I think we need our bonkers spell. Three, two, one, that's bonkers! <laughs> Ananias went, just kidding, to the house where Saul was staying. He placed his hands on Saul and told him that he would be filled with God's Holy Spirit. Right at that moment, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. Saul stood up and he was immediately baptized to show that he too was now a forever follower of Jesus. Wow! Paul went from total bonkers to total believer. So amazing. You know what? That reminds me of our big Bible story question. What do you think the story teaches us about Jesus? And how do you think Saul's life is going to be different after his encounter with Jesus? So pause the video and answer these questions. Pause the video. Pause the video. <laughs> Wow, Saul seemed like a pretty rotten guy. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. Saul hated Christians so much that he tried to have them arrested and even killed. But then something happened. What was it? Saul encountered Jesus on the road to Damas Damascus. Now instead of arresting and killing the Christians, Saul became a Christian. And when Saul became a Christian, everything changed. Even his name, Saul, became Paul. Yeah, look at what Paul did. Instead of squashing the good news of Jesus, Paul shared the good news with everyone. Instead of destroying the church, Paul started a whole bunch of new churches. And instead of discouraging others from following Jesus, Paul encouraged the new believers. In fact, out of the 27 books in the New Testament, 13 of the letters from Paul encouraging others to live and love like Jesus. Yeah, it's like the old Saul was gone and the new Saul showed up. In fact, that's what Paul said in his second letter to the Corinthians. It's in the Bible. Let's look at it together. First, we have to hit the bonkers button. Or two, bell. <laughs> three, two, one, that's bonkers! Act like a pretty, pretty princess. <laughs> oh, a pretty, pretty princess. I like this prompt. Here you go, princess. Princess. <laughs> All right, what's the scripture? <coughs> when anyone lives in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. Second When we become a Christian and start following Jesus, we become a new creation. The old of us is gone and the new of, us, new of us is here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The Bible says that when we are born, we have a sinful nature. That means we want to do lots of wrong things. Like these kind of wrong things that are on Carson's shirt. Let me see what they say. Throwing fits telling a lie, gossiping, breaking promises, back talking, bullying, being mean, saying bad words, wow Carson, <sighs> anger, yelling, making fun of someone, jealousy, disobeying parents, not sharing, laziness, holding a grudge, not forgiving, stealing, sneaking candy, wow, <laughs> that is a lot of sin. 
Wow, I am a sinful mess. <laughs> you are a sinful mess, Carson. The Bible tells us that there's only one way to get rid of our sinful nature. <laughs> when we become Christians and we start to follow Jesus, it's like our old sinful nature dies on the cross with Jesus. In its place, God gives us a new nature that wants to do what is right. Instead of hating, we have the desire for love. Love. love <laughs> peace. And instead of fighting, we have the desire for peace. Peace. Where's your peace? Oh, there's peace. your peace right there. Peace sign. Where's your peace? Where's your peace sign? Peace sign. Peace sign. Peace sign. And instead of you know, doing whatever we want to do, we have the desire for self-control. Stop! Self-control. And even though we are still going to mess up and we're still going to sin and we're going to feel sorry and have the desire to be forgiven, Jesus changes our heart and we're a new creation to follow him. And that's what it says right here on the cross, that we're a new creation when we choose to follow him. The old is gone, the new has come. By the way, let's clap for all the drama that Miss Angie did. <laughs> Pretty good. I went bonkers on that t-shirt. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. That reminds me of our how bonkers are you for Jesus question. When you start following Jesus, you become a new creation. How do you think Jesus changes you or makes you different? Please spend time and do your go home sheet journal, draw it, read it and pray it and pause the video to answer that question and to do your go home cheat journal yeah and also there's gonna be a short video from saddleback kids about paul's ministry to help with the story and we're gonna have two really bonkers songs to wor worship and rock out to so we hope you guys are all well and we hope that you guys are going bonkers at home right now and we can't wait to go bonkers with you next week don't forget jesus loves you bonkers <laughs> yeah bye guys mm -hmm. bye the Miracle of Mercy, Paul. This is Saul. Saul was a Pharisee who hated the followers of Jesus so much that he would hunt them down to be brought to trial in Jerusalem. And he would even seek to murder them. Saul was uttering threats with every breath, and he was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He asked him to write a letter to the Jews in Damascus that would allow him to arrest any Christians he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. Now Saul went on his way. And as he came near Damascus, a light from heaven flashed around him, and he heard a voice that said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul cried out, Who are you, Lord? And the voice said, I am Jesus. Rise and go into the city, and you will be told what to do. So Saul got up, and he opened his eyes, but he couldn't see anything. So the men who were with Saul led him into the city. After three days, a man named Ananias came to Saul. He put his hands on Saul and immediately Saul could see again. And with that, Saul became a follower of Jesus. He became the very thing he had tried to hunt and he immediately began telling people that Jesus is the Son of God, and he taught them about the mercy of God that he had received. And all who heard him were amazed. He then went by a new name, Paul, as he began preaching not just to the Jewish people, but to everyone. Despite many difficulties like being imprisoned, shipwrecked, 
and narrowly escaping death multiple times, Paul continued to preach about Jesus. Paul said that he would do everything he could to save people and help them know God. And that's just what he did in order to reach people who would otherwise be unreached. And many came to know Jesus because of what Paul said. Paul taught many in his day through his letters, but even more have come to learn more about Jesus through the letters of Paul that can be read even to this day.